So today we're going to do like a short little review on probability. So back a couple, couple of classes ago, we went over theoretical probability. We went over the two different types that y'all run into. So we're going to review this a little bit before your test. So there are two different types. The first one we went over with is something called a simple event. A simple event is whenever you try to gauge the probability or the likelihood that something will happen when it's only dealing with one particular thing. So here's an example of a simple probability problem. So you have a jar filled with 25 jelly beans. 12 of them are going to be red and 13 of them are going to be blue. What's the likelihood that you're going to grab a red one out of the, out of the bin? So here's the information that you have. You are told that you have 25 total beans and then you have 12 red ones and you have 13 blue ones. So whenever you are trying to actually solve for simple probability, it's actually pretty easy. It's going to be solved by using a simple division problem. The way that you actually solve probability is by taking the things that you want and divide it by the total. So we want to find out the probability of getting a red bean out of this jar of 25 jelly beans. How many red beans are there? 12. So that constitutes as the thing that you want out of that whole jar. Now, I've already written it down on there, and on your test, you'll read it as 25 jelly beans. How many are there? What's the total? 25. So this is how you would solve it. So someone read back at me. What is the probability? What did you actually get when you do this? 0.48. So and if I want to change 0.48 into a percentage, what would it be? Yeah. So the probability is that that in order for you to get a red jelly bean, you actually have a 48% chance of pulling it out of the jar. So this is how you would solve for probability of a simple event. So here's another example of a simple event. If I wanted to roll a dice one time, what's the likelihood that I would roll the number two? So again, we'll kind of set it up just like how we just did. First off, how many sides are on a dice? Six. A typical dice that you're going to run into is going to have a total of six. So you have six sides. And you want to roll a two. How many of those sides have the number two on them? One. So if you're trying to find the number two, there is all, well, I guess I'm not going to do that. There's only one side. So it's solved the same exact way. You do the things that you want and divide it by the total. So how many of the sides do we actually want here? One. And then the total number of sides is going to be the other. It's going to be the six. So all you have to do is plug into the calculator just like this. This is how you would solve some probability. So what do we get? 0.17. If I want to change 0.17 to a percentage, what would it be? 17%. So these are two examples of simple probability. You're only solving for one thing. You only want to know what's the probability of me getting one particular side or one particular type of jelly bean. So now I want to ask you a different type of question. This question is going to ask you to roll a six-sided dice twice. What's the probability of rolling a one and then a two? So again, we're going to kind of treat it the same way. How many total sizes the dice have? Y'all told me the last problem there, six. But they tell you that they want you to roll it twice. So if you were to combine the two together, what would the total be? 12. Okay. So the new total is 12 in total. Or there are two six sided dice. And then they tell you that you want to roll one and then a two. How many are on each dice? How many ones? Is on a dice and how many twos are on a dice? There's one, 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 two. So 
Now the two individuals for each of those are ones. So this is a different type of problem. We would have went over this a couple of days ago. This is called compound probability. It's when you're actually trying to solve for two types of probability. If you're trying to solve for two things at one time, then the last type of problem, the simple probability, you only were trying to look for one particular thing. And this one may ask you two things. There's a key difference with these types of problems that y'all can actually like notice like on the test, like or on your proficiency or whatever they're going to ask you this. The way that you know you're going to be solving for two types of things is by the word and. If they ever give you the word and in a problem, you know that you're probably going to solve for more than one thing. Like if you listen to the way I said it, if you roll two dice, what's the probability of you rolling a one and a two? They're usually going to ask you for two separate things back to back. So that's the key difference between the two types of problems. So like in the last problem, we were only trying to find a one. Y'all told me that'd be one over six. This is how you would solve it if you're actually trying to do it again. If you want to roll a two after that, if you roll the second dice, what you end up doing is you take the probability of the second thing you're looking for and multiply it by the first. So this is how you would solve compound probability. You find the probability of the first thing, and then you multiply it by the probability of the second thing. The reason I wrote the number 12 right here for the total is that there are 12 total sides between the two of them. If you're looking for two things, you can also rewrite it as a two over 12. So someone plugs into your calculator and tell me, what does one over six times one over six equal? 0.03. And as a percentage, what does it turn into? 3%, okay. Another key thing to point out whenever we're going through different types of probability. With compound probability, if you actually look at the one we literally just did, the percentage came out to be 17% for one over six. If you actually were to do the same thing twice, the percentage of it happening actually goes down way, way low. So with compound probability, the probability is always going to be lower than a single event. So now what I want y'all to do is on your papers, what I want y'all to do is answer the questions that are on there. Uh, 